So the next and final step in the decom process is going to be the clay. Um, for this instance, I'm going to be using a synthetic mitt. So we are still trying these. One side is just your normal material. The black side, what you see there, is the synthetic clay. So what I like to do is always give the human detailer a shake. So one of the main advantages of using the UM detail, it's got really, really good lubricity. And this is the step that you've got to be careful at as well, because yes, you're polishing, but you do not want to be inflicting any more damage because there's just more damage that you've got to take out. So what I like to do, you can't put too much of this on, the more the merry actually. So if you're not sure, the best thing to do now that you've got something on the panel is always feel with your hands. Your skin is very sensitive, especially on your hands. So if you do feel anything, it will be kind of translated through your hand movements. Now, I can't feel anything at all, but what we're gonna do just as a precaution step, just in case um, the machine in the next steps picks up anything it runs the risks of obviously spinning um, all the contaminants about, and this is what's gonna create the pigtails and you're gonna start chasing your tail. I know that on the back there is, in the corner, a little bit of, of contamination, so I'm gonna quickly work around the car, clay it um, as a precaution in case there is anything on the car, um, and this will truly give us kind of the clean surface ready for polishing, so I always like to prime it as well. You can put your hand in the mitt. I like to keep it loose. Um, if I'm working on any vertical panels, I put the hand in there. And the key is there's no pressure. It's literally speed that matters. It works on friction. Friction is king in this instance. So you can't actually hear anything on the paint, which is what you're looking at. If you can hear anything when you move your hand, you know the surface is contaminated. Um, as I said on the previous episode, this car has been looked after in terms of the, the decar maintenance. So when it comes to times like this, it's a very quick job. I'm gonna feel it here. Still nothing. Prove my theory that what I was doing as a maintenance, it's most clearly working. Again, the protection was always kept up to scratch at all times. which works hand in hand with the maintenance decon steps because the car's well protected, nothing sticks. And if it does stick, it's not sticking to the paint, it's sticking onto the sacrificial air of the car, which is exactly what you want. So I'm just grabbing a waffle weave now to wipe up any of the residuals. So the reason I didn't do this when the car was wet, when I brought the car in, the panel temperatures were hot. Um, so I didn't want the product to start potentially drying on the surface. So I brought it in here, dried it off. Obviously I waited about 40 minutes for the panels to cool. And that's just the best way really. You want as much work time as possible and you don't want to rush this step especially if the car was heavily um, contaminated. Now what I am expecting on the front end, there might be some ingrained bugs. But it's no matter. So 
So yeah, I brought it in. I'm just taking the waffle weave just to make sure I wipe everything down. If you work clean, it's just easier. So you don't have to chase your tail at a further time. go oh yeah lovely lovely that's exactly what you want to feel you want to feel a glass like surface so again let's feel the windscreen absolutely nothing it's it's good, but it's very strange, <laughs> very strange. Now the treatment that we've got on the glass, um, I can't wait to share it with you, but um, it's unbelievable. Another proven factor, because especially now it's, so what is it now, it's May. So it's not only pollen season, it's bug season. So um, if you take any journeys, especially on the motorways, one of the main places, apart from the front bumper and the front end, is the windscreen. Now, if left unchecked for a while, obviously the bug guts will start to ingrain themselves. And this is where, in this step, when you start feeling, you'll start to feel certain bumps. just a quick wipe with this as well you're not looking to start getting any streaks if there are any you just want to wipe the product off just to make sure there's no drying I will find a spot so what I will do as well is another trick I will follow up with an IPA wipe of the car prior to polishing. And this is just another step, another precautionary step to um, make sure the surface is as squeaky clean as possible prior to polishing. Because the way it works is if you've got anything protective on the paint, it's going to interfere with the polishing process. So the first few passes you're gonna start actually embedding the, whichever protective element you've got, so any ceramics, waxes, which means obviously that first few passes is a waste of product time, um, energy. Oh, let's check. So with the IPA wipe, it's just another excuse to kind of strip as much protection as you can. Still nothing. <laughs> said this is a really quick exercise so with the eye as I was saying with the IPA wipe it's really important um, it's not necessary actually but it's just a habit I've, I've got into it gives you as much of a naked surface prior to polishing as possible but still the only true way to remove anything is through polishing so even if you do have a little bit on, you will start to uh, remove the protection. And that's something there. The little spot there, we found a spot. 
But as, as you've seen on the iron fallout um, segment of the video, the wing mirrors were really, really saturated in iron, but it was smooth. Oh, this is beautiful. And you can just see with the synthetic clay just how quick this is. I even managed to get under the door handle, no problem. Now, if this was a really bad car, and you wanted to get in between a badge or an emblem or something like that, then maybe clay would have been a better tool to use. But in this instance, as you've seen, I had a, a millimeter of a spot so far. And that's, yeah, that's been removed. Nice and simple. Let's do the roof. That's normally a hot spot. Now that could be tree sap. Again, this is a horizontal panel. So anything that does land on the car is normally quite susceptible in this area. So my analogy with, with the clay step is basically when, well, two analogies is you wouldn't go and run a marathon or run somewhere and not go in the shower and immediately apply moisturizer. So obviously the moisturizer has been the protection or the polishing step. You would obviously go in the shower first, clean yourself up and then start with the other steps. And also the next one is the nose strips. The ones you put on your nose. I've never used one, but you see it all the time on adverts. The ones that kind of you peel off and you see all the, all the blackheads. So the clay is that piece of elastic plaster that you put on your face and pull it off. And you see um, everything come out. This is exactly the same thing because the paint's very porous, including glass. So with this clay step, you're exfoliating the paint. some stickers here so yeah you're exfoliating the paint to give it the the best possible chance to um, respond well to polishing as I said everything's out of a hundred percent everything you do just adds five ten percent on to the whole process it just makes your life a lot easier the polishing can be done quicker with more effect. You don't need to do this. I'm, I'm just doing this for my own, like a case study. I do use a few processes, which I kind of, I made up. So this is more of an educational thing for myself. Um, if I was just cleaning a normal car, I wouldn't be doing this apart from like a check afterwards, just to make sure everything's smooth. Um, but the car's in really good shape. No contaminants or barely any. Now these areas normally are the worst. Nice and smooth. So I'm gonna give you the best angles here. See what's really happening. Now I know the bad glass is bad. It's just this area, yeah. There's a few bits when I say bad, it's bad for me. But yeah, it's just, I don't know why this specific area and nothing else. I'm still trying to rack my head around it. Yeah, they're just in this corner specifically. In fact, you can hear it. You hear that, yeah. Just trying to pinpoint. See, 
can't hear it now. So it may look like I'm pumping pressure and I'm not. It's literally just the weight of my hand. And I'm even trying to ease off this. I'm trying to look at that. What is that? Hmm. Interesting. Oh yeah, such a difference. Holy moly. Bend a bit, yeah, just there, another one. Now here's a tip as well, when you do get a piece of clay or clay mitt, anything like that, I would always start on the glass first if it's brand new it just gives you the chance to kind of break it in. The glass can't really be as scratched as easily as paint. Um, so yeah, just plenty of, of lubricity. And you can, the front windscreen and probably the back glass, the two largest, they'll probably bed in the clay bars really nicely. And it'll be good to go everywhere else. Oh yeah, look, I'll move the mic closer. Can't hear anything, which is what you want. Oh, what was that? There we go. Now this is interesting. It's not taut. Yeah, there's a few bits here. Where's that one? You can feel it straight away. So it's, you can hear that. Oh yeah, I think that's pollen. Potentially pollen anyway, a tree sap. It's just randomly embedded itself in. I know there's a little bit more contamination than usual. Just apply more lube. Ooh, this is fairly bad as well. Yeah, I knew the rear end was probably the worst. I must have parked half a car into a tree. God knows. But still, Still, the point applies. Three years, just don't forget that. Tar and iron will not remove the other types of contamination. So, all the other things on here is usually a manual, manual decon, and this is exactly what we're doing. Now, especially on the gloss black, Clay and step will do a bit of marring, which is expected, but it's no worries. It's exactly why I always say don't clay without polishing. If you do inflict a mark, you can remove it. It's still classes an abrasive. Get a nice fresh towel now. Good. Most importantly, yeah. And if there is a chance that you you might have missed somewhere accidentally, it's no problem because you would have already degraded most of it. Um, this step can take quite a while. This is why I just say always take your time. You'll earn the time back when you're polishing. 
when you don't chase your own tail. So in this case, when there's a possibility of dropping the mitt, I like to put it in, a bit like a wash mitt. Just work around everywhere. Again, there's no problems here. As you can see, the tight areas, you can still contort the, the mitt into them. It's warm today, 22 degrees. The unit's facing the sun, so it's beating down now, warming this place up. So I'm gonna finish the other side off camera. And we're gonna move on to the next step, which is doing the test spots. Having a little bit of a discussion about the whole point of a test spot. And then we'll move on to the pain correction side. <laughs> 